everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Here at SEMA, there's going to be so many builders, so many amazing, beautiful cars, but something special that I needed to show you guys and see it myself for up close as well and introduce you all to Jim and Mike Ring. The Ring Brothers, this is what this video is all about. Let's find out exactly about them and what they've got here at SEMA. Hey there, you two. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah. And SEMA, this is massive. Yeah, massive. This is massive. It's overwhelming, as I have been th uh, speaking about throughout my vlog. But you guys have got some very, very unique builds here, some very custom builds here. Yep. Before we look at the cars, let's find out a little bit about Jim and Mike Ring. So the Ring brothers, everybody knows the name. Tell us, how, when did all this start? Well, we're the youngest of seven. There's two boys, and then four girls, and then another brother. Uh, we always had a passion for cars, and uh, growing up, you know, uh, it was just not a lot to do where we lived, so we had to play with something, and cars happened to be it, and we're here yeah, and today. Then I went off in the Navy, and he, he did construction, and then we both did construction after the Navy, and um, Jim started a restoration business. He was losing his ass, so he wanted somebody <laughs> to come back, and misery wants company, so... We came back and he had started then a collision business. And, wow, and so from construction yep. to cars and mechanics. Yeah. How did that tra transition happen? Just because of passion, you know, doing it as you were a kid. And really it's like what, you know, not, there was seven of us, nobody went to school or college. So it was just that passion that didn't matter. In life, it wasn't about money, because yeah. we really never had any. It was just that this is what we wanted to do, this is what we love to do. And it just grew into... It grew uh, tremendously. Into a brand, you know, yeah. hopefully. Well, it, got... it is a brand. It is a brand. <laughs> you guys are very humble, but it is a brand. It really got started with... Uh, uh, I was in construction. I was in Chicago at the time, and I found a 69 Camaro Indy Pace car in the paper. I didn't have any money to buy it, and I walked down to a local bank. I told my wife I was going to go down and see if they'll borrow me five thousand dollars so I could buy this car. And she's like, "Good luck," you know. So, walked in and must have talked to the right guy because he gave me the money. I don't wow. know how. Didn't know me from Adam. Yeah. Wow. I bought the car, drove back to Wisconsin every weekend to restore the car in my mother's basement. Sold that car, made a little money on it, and that's really what started my business. It gave me the opportunity to. It was meant to be. Yep. Yeah when things aligned, that it sounded like it was meant to be the right person at the bank. Yeah. But where did your skills of restoration come from, Jim? Just doing it, you know, right, trial and error. Trial yeah. and error. Was yeah. there somebody like a dad or a, you know, someone in there who was? Our dad owned a gas station, but it wasn't from that because we, we were more into tearing them completely apart. Everything we ever did, even if it was Christmas night, and we got uh, we'd always tear it apart tear it apart that night and probably ruined it and couldn't I'm, even get it to work there was a story i remember my dad bought us each a bike he took us bought us a bike first bike we ever we'd never had anything he bought us a bike two days later i was so infatuated by it, it was a 10 speed and i took the gears apart in the back and all the bearings fell out and i couldn't put it back together and i must have cried for three weeks so <laughs> finally somebody helped me fix it <laughs> but this is where i'm getting at and i yeah. think we're now getting a little bit of insight to where the creativity comes from yeah. because if you guys were not breaking things apart yeah. yeah then maybe we would not be seeing such beautiful builds today yeah well and then Thank we you. just were lucky enough to hire people um, we are called the ring brothers but there's a lot of people behind us there is a big team yep. yeah yep. so um, not as big as what people would probably think. Okay. But um, just the people we have are really passionate. And um, how much of the building now that the name has gotten so big are you guys involved with with your hands? Everyone. Oh, everything. Everything. Yeah. Honestly, the women run the business, and we just want to work. You just want to just stay in there and get your hands yeah, dirty. Yeah. We. I don't. Jim's got an office. He's not in it. I don't have an office. We, we just. We just. Well, work. I would love to come out one day to Wisconsin and yeah. do a shop tour and have a look exactly. You might what be happens. disappointed. There's no <laughs> showroom. There's no, you know, it's just every nook and cranny is is being used. So wow. we're actually in four buildings now, so it's pretty spread out. Okay. Yeah, you welcome well, anytime. We're definitely going to have to do that, but we are here in Seymour, and you've got something brilliant behind you. So who's going to walk us through it about the charger? Jim can walk you through, or I can, it doesn't matter. All right, well, let's start with the basics. What year? Oh, sorry. 69 Dodge Charger. Uh, 
It's running a uh, roadster shop chassis. It's independent uh, front and rear. So uh, we actually moved the wheels, the front wheels ahead an inch and a half to get rid of some of the, these chargers always had a lot of overhang in front of the wheel. So yeah. that helped that and that allowed us to move the motor back also, which helped the balance of the vehicle. So the wheels have actually been moved back? Yeah. Uh, the front wheels have been moved forward. Forward, that's what I thought. Half. It's such a small space here yeah. compared to... Yeah, yep. which meant we had to make new front fenders for it because the wheel openings were obviously in a different spot at that point. Wow. I have to point out one thing on the front end that's just... This little piece of trim is normally seven pieces of aluminum. We machined this piece, one piece of aluminum, it took 560 pounds of aluminum to make this three pound part. Wow, and okay, and why, why is that so special for it to well, be? Well, because on a stock car, these, when you put this to grill together, the, there was a piece that just glued this C piece, and that part went over this flat piece, and then it come over to here, and this center piece went over the top of this flat piece, on top, bottom, same all the way across. So to get rid of all of them seams and all of them grooves. Which only would have been seen through a microscopic lens, I'm nobody, guessing. Nobody, that's why but yes. through your eyes, yeah, you yeah. could have seen that. And well, you're like, I don't want that there. Yeah. Yeah. This just looks cobbled. Yeah. And then these, this original part here is a bunch of plastic pieces bolted together. So we machined a mold and made a one piece carbon wow. surround that's scanned. So it's just like the original, except it's perfect. Perfect. And by the way, this, this piece. Yourself, um, no. Okay. By the way, this piece goes from here to the other end, so you can imagine. Oh, wow. Okay. You can imagine the size of chunk of aluminum it took to cut that out in one piece. I'm so glad you brought my attention to that because that's the details that is involved here in the builds that you guys do. And like I said, the seven individual pieces. You walk past it, the ordinary person. Nobody would nobody have noticed it, nobody would have seen it. Yeah. But here you guys are that know, let's get rid of these seams. And and you got to have a, the right customer to allow you to, to do that. That's an expensive <laughs> part there. 100%. Love the carbon fiber touch here. And even this here, the, it looks like vents. What, what they were stuff? factory like that. That was a factory. We uh, wanted to retain exactly what it looked like, except make clean it, it clean. And bring it to the 21st century, right? Wow. Now, can we have a look under here? Again, fine details. Fog lights? They're actually the turn indicators, and you know, we did the backgrounds gold them, so it kind of pulled the. Typically, they'd be a silver looking park light, but they're gold now to kind of tie in the gold accents of the car. the lines, the finishes, it's just, it's, there is a lot of things in here that as soon as you look at it, you know that it's a classic charger. For example, the interior, the console right in the middle, very yep. vintage look, but then again, it's been modernized. Yes. Yeah. So before um, we look in there, let's talk about the engine and then we'll move into the interior because I do love the interior that I've seen. The engine is a, is a Chrysler crate motor elephant it's a thousand horsepower um, they run really well they're you know they're 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 not gentle by any means <laughs> but we like we had Sean at the shop we machined the logos the 426 and the elephant and these and then welded them on to the guys just talented he just this is all just flat aluminum he bent welded our that we machined this logo and everything into and then he welded that in like this whole cover on a supercharger on the on any of the red eyes or any of them this nose is off centered it just doesn't look right so this piece here he just handmade out of aluminum and it looks more compact as well yeah now. exactly and it covered up some of the nasty looking and, and it also centered this hump this space here is now centered we're on a on a stock one it's offset a little bit yep and like all the caps we made but if you look at the if you read that one it's kind of juice. <laughs> <laughs> the boost juice okay so we try to make even though they look factory we try to find little hidden things make fun of it make fun of it you know Jim me and you were talking about the gold before 
Yeah. Because I am loving the gold. It's, it's not striking. You know, when I say when I say striking, and I have used that term before, it's because you know it flashes at you and it catches your attention. This is subtle. It is so beautiful in its own right. Can we lower the hood and let's have a look and chat about the gold gem because it's beautiful and how it continues on from the rims. Yeah. Um, so HRE did the wheels. Uh, they did a brush gold is what they call it. So you can actually see the machine marks in Attention it. Attention in the exhibit hall. Welcome to day two of the 56th annual Zuma Show. It's a beautiful day and going to be amazing. Today's show hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The SEMA show is now open. Okay. So, so the gold, HRE did the wheels, they did them in a brush gold, and then we, we really wanted to have these, obviously these elephants take a lot of room, so we had to build this hood and raise it up. And, we tried to t bring in the gold to the hood with these machine pieces that you see, the scoops. Um, they were actually plated by HRE the same as the wheels, and just Mike thought they, they were just a little too much on the car, needed to be settled down a little bit. So we ended up mat clearing them, which kind of calmed them down a little bit and really made it tie into the rear tail stripe uh, as far as the colors, not so, not so vivid as the wheels. So they were a little bit more shinier than this. They were basically like the wheel. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. The they shine. got a little were, more shine to them. And there was a the wheel we love. We didn't want to take away from the wheels because HRE built such an amazing wheel. And you, even with the brush strokes on you the can wheel, see it. you can see the gold yeah. yes. streaks. It's, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Wow. And if you another big thing that we did on this car is. Chargers have a fake scoop in the door. We actually got rid of that, made new door skins, and machined these functional scoops that actually work now, where before it was just a treatment in the door. Now we machined these. All this when we made the new fender, because obviously we moved the wheel Everything ahead. It has been moved forward, and as a result, we've got a longer door now. Yes. Yep. But it still retained the charger feel of the scoops. But, I mean, you can't just walk past this and see, oh, yes, it's a great looking charger. No, there was so much more happening. Yeah, like, we we really love the filler necks on these cars, factory, but they only have one. We put in, we put another one in on this side. Now, let's talk about the back here as well. Yes. The lines have... Well, you can see, like, on the rear of this car, how the bumpers fit so well. There's, they've been all reshaped to actually just have a much better body gap on everything that fits the body, where they didn't do that. Uh, from the factory, um, the exhaust tips were all machined. There are actually a couple different pieces to these. There's the outer bezel, and then there's the inner piece that actually the exhaust system clamps into, which these kind of just float in here. The whole tail light panel was rebuilt to actually go down uh, and meet the bottom belly pan. I don't know if you can get the, the camera under there, but the bottom of the the belly pan is, is kind of unique. And the, even like the window trim, we wanted to retain trim on the window even though we painted it, but we welded them all the pieces together. So you it's see a how there's piece. no seams, like typically there's a seam just like yep. the front grill and all of these pieces snap together. It's one piece now. It gets rid of all of the seams. There's such small changes, but they make such a big difference. Yeah. They make such a big difference when you, when you, because you stand back and you're like, wow, what's happening here? Yep. And then you don't realize how small that little change is. And we got rid of the seams that were back in here yep. too. So it just is a cleaner feel. You've got the gold and I love it back here as well. And then you've still managed to keep things subtle. Whereas I think most other builders and some people would have been like, great, let's put the charger with yeah, gold home. as well. Yeah. Or chrome. Yeah. Love that. On the inside, I 
I don't know if you can see the Tusk logo. We machined these, this little, the name. But it's actually 24 karat on the end like an elephant would have during a ceremony the uh, tips would be in gold so we when we machined them we wanted to, just a little detail that you have to look for in the name when we designed it the owner was very adamant about keeping the inside of this car on the original side he, he likes the 69 charger and he didn't want to get away from it but some of the really things pistol grip shifter but it's carbon fiber yeah. and the over yeah. it looks completely different yeah. now yeah. The steering wheel is a Ring Brothers steering wheel, which we do offer. Uh, we do a, some different variants of that, but it's, uh, it this, just fits this car pretty well. The, the seats, seats are actually yeah. Toyota. A Honda. Toyota. They're Honda. Honda seats. They're, they're what? A, they're yeah, a Honda are, seat modified to make it look like a, a 69 Charger, which it gives so you well. all the, you know, it, it, it allows you to do, you know, everything you would like to do with the seat, put it back. or. Uh, it's just more comfortable seats than a stock Charger seat. But it has been modified. And just by to make it look like it, yeah. the original. Yeah. The headrest, you know, we, we made, made them look like an original. This is a piece of aluminum in here that sandwiches these pieces together that's been polished. And so it looks very factory, but yet it's not. The back seat, since the tunnel's so high with the independent, we had to make it look like it was factory, but it's three pieces to make it but it still looks like it could have been and even the headliner that we made in the light up top and the back shelf it's all bluetooth it just doesn't look it we kept the old looking radio but it's all bluetooth we've even got the old radio everything's analog but yet yes it's all converted to the stereo is amazing in this car too. It's really, a, it's. You can see we used the Chrysler, the new Chrysler pedal assemblies, drive-by wire, gas pedal, uh, clutch and brake pedal. Even even the door panels are made to even look factory. Even painted this. This is normally red. It's gold. I know it's little, but it's just the well, time. I have to ask you guys, when you were younger and tearing things apart, were you this much into the detail as you are? No, I think you just, uh, when you get into these cars, what bugs you, you, you look at, and you just don't assume any part is right. Yeah. You know, you got to look at everything. A lot of this stuff is just done on the fly. It's like, Jim's like, go paint this. And it's like, and I'll paint it. And he's like, that looks like shit. Start again. Paint it this color. That doesn't look good. Paint it this color. And sometimes we go right back to where we started, but sometimes it just ends up... But that speaks of your passion. Yeah. That really screams of your passion of just how involved you get with a customer's car, because whether it's your own or not, it's the passion right. for doing this that yeah. comes through in your work. And having the paint, doing it all in-house, it's, it's not like you're at a shop where they send it out and get painted, and then you get back and, well, it is what it is. You know, we're doing... It's not that way with us. We're just like... Everything if it doesn't look then. right, it's like this color. It looks just black, but it's not. It's oh. pearl and it's matte and it's um, got metallic in it. You just don't see it, but it does give it a different feel. Like the door latches, hey. they're all they're PT Cruiser. Um, like the doors the, in the doors and then the strikers here. Um, basically helps you shut the door a lot easier. They just sound better. They're just nicer latches that work better than the 60s stuff. So in-house, the paint, the interior, obviously the build, everything happens. Not this interior. We have Not a guy, we, we make a lot of the panels and Steve, Steve from Upholster Unlimited, who's a great friend, and he, uh, he does 99% of our interior is Steve's done. The Rolls Royce that will, um, Gabe's yep. did that and he, he killed it too. So those, to us, they're the best of the best, yeah. Well, on that note, we need to walk over to the Rolls. Let's go see it. Let's go see it. All right. All right everybody, so we looked at the Charger by the Ring Brothers, but we have to see the 61, 61, right? 61. Rolls Royce Silver Cloud 2. Here again with the Ring Brothers, Jim and Mike. 
How has the day been? I know it's the end of the day and you look tired. It's a long day. It's a long day. And it's not done yet. It's yeah. not done yet. <laughs> you know, we started the interview with the charger in the morning yep. when everybody was fresh and just like now, it wasn't many people here at SEMA and now at the end of the day, we're back to another one of your cars. But this just shows how busy SEMA is and how much big your schedule is as well. People love the Ring Brothers. You know, you've got a very tight schedule from podcasts. Um, tell me a little bit about what you guys have been doing in SEMA. You know, running from podcast to podcast and uh, walk around to walk around, you know. Like, Interviews we're, we're, to yep. uh, meeting some students at BASF that they brought in to mentor some of them and kind of show them some of the ropes. And just amazing, you know, just people wanting to do an article and talking to them about articles. and. It's been fun though, it's really been fun. You look like you've been having fun and I really appreciate this because I know you're tired but you enjoy what you do. Yeah. And that's why you have been doing all the podcasts and yeah. teaching the kids as well. And now at the end of the day, meeting back up with Crazy Rana <laughs> to finish off our interview because I do love the Rolls Royce. Let's have a look here. Well, it's pretty much just a, a the body's a pretty stock bodied Rolls Royce. You know, the problem with these cars is they didn't drive and handle very well. Um, so we ended up putting a Roadster Shop uh, independent chassis underneath it with a LT4, which is making about 650 horse, uh, and that goes into a 10-speed transmission. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey. The uh, the interior of this car, we had to move the front seat back. These cars had the. You know basically the cockpit for the passengers in the back and just a little area for the guy to drive them around so they could you know be in peace back there with their separation window and stuff that's right because yeah. traditionally everybody would have had a driver for these yeah. exactly which is why the back seat would have had the table yeah. so let's go and have a look at that but um you've changed that concept well, we had to because the owner of this car is a pretty big man and okay. there was no way to get him in the car. Of course, he wanted to drive it. He didn't want to sit in the back He didn't seat. want to have a driver? Yeah, he, yeah, he Why didn't not? Want to drive our, yeah. You're driving a Rolls Royce, have a nice uh, driver. I'll open up the door for you. But let's go and have a look. And as we're doing that, let's have a look at the paint. Very different to what the paint um, palette would have been like for the Rolls Royce at yes. that time. This is bringing, you know, doing a restoration that brings it to the modern day at its finest, everybody. Even the wheels is really machine to look all like the originals, but the 18 inch, but they have the new gyro center caps that are in his new Rolls Royce, so that our stays centered on the car. It never moves. It never moves. I, I keep calling those the floating caps. Yeah, basically. They yeah. are, aren't they? But I'm loving the lines here before we get inside everybody. Yeah. Look at this. And I guess this is where we can see um, maybe some of the the doors. Have they been widened as well? No. no. Oh, the doors haven't opened. We just got rid of all the old wood that was in this car. It used to be wood on top. These, all this used to be wood that ran all the way around the entire car. Even across uh, the back of the seat was wood. The seat was a modified 1957 Chevrolet seat that we modified to fit in here after the whole seat was taken out. You can see the headliner, it has the new Rolls Royce star. Oh, this is the headliner I saw in pictures. Yes. Okay, so would you, you think he would mind there. if I you get in? Crawl right in there. All right, I can crawl right in here. Definitely less room than the original Silver Cloud 2s. Now, we have done a couple of videos, so I will put some links for you guys to check it out where they've been restored back to absolute original um, condition. But we still have the tables. I love yeah. that this has been kept. You can pull it hard. Yep, there you go. I love that this has been kicked and it's not too bad. You can still have room to sit here and enjoy it. And what you're seeing, the reflection here is definitely the headliner, everybody. One of the things that stuck with me when I was watching the pictures of this online before SEMA is this. I love this. Whose idea was this? Actually, I think Jim knew the, the new ones had it and asked Gabe the interior if they could do that. And Gabe never did it, but he did it for us. So. It's wow. pretty cool, and you can program it to change, and the lights change, and wow, it's pretty neat. Even made a little special armrest here to flip that oh. open. If you flip it forward, oh, it has <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Rolls Royce, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and there's a little remote here. That's for the um, headliner? That's for the headliner, yeah. Wow. It has to be class. It has to be luxurious. These seats are very comfortable, everyone. Going to the dash, you know, this is, we wanted it to be uh, Rolls Royce. Uh, we actually had classic instruments uh, build us all new gauges for it, which are all modern. It's got the touch drive, so you can actually just push, drive, park, reverse. Uh, it gets rid of the old Rolls Royce shifter handle that's up here. So, made all the knobs so they all match the old Rolls Royce knobs for the headlights and. It's, it's absolutely beautiful, Jim. You know, just before we started this interview, Mike and I, we were talking about um, custom work and restoration of vintage and classic cars. And to keep some things and add some things not to lose from the character of the actual car and why we love it for those reasons. Right. And as, our, as, as Jim was telling me this, I remembered what you said because this dash here is very modern. Yep. But yet again, didn't want to change it's what it was. Original. It's still very original at the same time. Yes. Wow, I just that, that left me speechless and I had to add it in because it, it's absolutely brilliant. The wood there along with the gauges, it's, it's not digital, yet it is. Yep. And I, I, I love that. Wow. So while it's off, it looks very what the car looked like before. Except now the owner's got a lot more room. Yes, he does to sit and enjoy this but wow this is beautiful touches right there i will step out and um, have a look around the back and let's get some more questions here wow that dash is beautiful yeah it really is that's what i'm saying we use the original gauge bezel that was in it but it was wood we primed it, painted it, hydro dipped it, so we matched all our, got rid of all that old Queen Anne, what I would say, furniture. Look, yes. Which, the Victorian time. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, <laughs> not into that, but personally, and really put the wood back, but it's a modern, just hydro dip that we picked. It's masculine as well. Yes. For me, the classic Rolls Royces, they very were, they were feminine. very feminine. Yes. Yep. Whereas this here, I'm guessing it's a male owner. Yep. It's still a Rolls Royce, yet yeah, it's, it's, it's muscular, it's yeah. powerful. Yes. It's powerful. Very powerful. It's not wood, it's hydro dipped. Correct. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Hydro dipped is basically, you'll see it on a lot of things that you probably don't even know what it is, but basically it's a film, you put it in water, and it's funny, it looks like a sheet of plastic. You lay it in water, and then you squirt it with an activator that actually eats. Yeah. It eats the backing of the material. So mm -hmm. what you have left is floating ink. And it's sitting in this pond of water, or this bat of water. Wow. And it's sitting there. Close. So the trick is how do you put Take. your part into it. Yeah. So then it goes Still. over the top. So it's basically like ink that just sticks to your part. And the trick is being good enough so okay. you can do okay. it where it lines up. There's, a, there's an art. It takes there's an art to it. I can see that. It, at first, when you're telling me about it, I almost feel like it's, um, it's kind of like stripping the paint. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of a reverse process of that. You're basically putting that ink in the water and you're pushing your part through the ink to transfer The ink is already the, in the water. Yes, and then that this is part, you're, so you got this painted wow. piece and that color is what makes the different color once you put the ink on top. Wow. So you think of this floating ink and then you got a painted part and you dip it into this and now you got this and the pattern alone pattern. it's just so unique right up from that and dipping patterns process. that you can have made yourself you can have your name everything you can do whatever if you the can sky's dream the it, limit can on the patterns you can do anything and wow. then you have to clear it when you're done you, you would paint it's like, like it's a you would paint almost or something think of it as that it's super thin and you clear over it and then you polish it like you would your outside your car gives it a very unique look yeah it's not wood it's not like it's wood grain but it looks different to wood grain, right. and it's because of the hydrogen thing that's been involved. Ryan at uh, our shop painted these because we have Road America is a famous racetrack in Wisconsin. Okay. And this is actually the shape of the track, and they do make license plate like this in Wisconsin. You can order, but we made them, painted them, and we made the badge Paramount. Yeah, he owned a company. Yeah, that was named Paramount. 
so we named this car for him. He didn't know that, so it was pretty cool. That was your touch there. Now, while we're here, Ring Brothers, not only do you guys make amazing custom cars, but you do so many parts. Yes. And some of the things that I have seen is definitely the steering wheel, the door handle, yes. a lot of unique things. Up. Is it any part of the car that you're able to custom make or make an, what is it, an embezzlement for it or? Not particularly this car because mm -hmm. we didn't want to change what the car was. You well, know, we could. We could very, very easily. I mean, I think the only custom part on here is the, the emblem that we made for the, emblem. the car. Yeah. But it goes back to how we talked before. So if it's cool, you don't have to just because you can. Okay. Exactly. Which is why the body lines have been kept. Exactly. To 61. And the door handles, you know, they all are the the door, old, yeah. but it's still cool. And the wheels were kind of cool, so we just made them bigger so you can put bigger tires and brakes on it. This is beautiful because the silver clouds, um, it looks very different to the other silver clouds I have seen, yet it's still respecting the traditional what look did, of what yeah. it came from. Because often it's we super see. Super quiet. We bought Cadillac exhaust off of an ATSV, so a really quiet car that had the LT4 in it. And it was like $5,000, very expensive exhaust system, but it had four cats. And we cut all that up. To make it quiet. To and make used it fit in this car. everything GM did, mm -hmm. all their Cadillac converters, their muffler, even though we had to cut the muffler and change where we mounted it, and put it upright instead of we had to go in and change the outlets and inlets on it and put the cutouts so the motor could breathe when the floor it, the exhaust opens up. But what's cool about this exhaust, most guys do cutouts before the muffler so it gets really loud. Yes, I've heard of that. Yes, well this has got the same thing but it's actually after the muffler so it's still quiet but it lets it breathe and that's all you hear when you nail it is a supercharger line. Other than that it's just like quiet. Wow, Not electric like quiet. Yeah, very quiet car. Very comfortable. Because it's Rolls a Rolls Royce. Royce. Be quiet. It's a Rolls Royce. Everybody, you know, we're, we're not here next to a Barracuda who's right, ready just exactly. to take off. This is a Rolls Royce, and from the interiors to the beautiful paint finish, to the wheels, it's everything has to kind of flow. So I do understand that, and um, it's amazing the amount of work that you guys have put in just to keep the car with what it is and where it's come from, yep. where it's come from. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I appreciate this so Thank much, you. honestly. Yes. You guys, I know you've had a very big day, so absolutely yeah. honored that you guys have given me these interviews, and one day I'll have to come over to Wisconsin and check out Ring Brothers. Yeah, that'll be good. I hope so too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.